Night shifters, ever witnessed a paranormal activity? If so, what was it? I worked at a 7 Elevenths. One night I kept hearing what sounded like a little girl crying, but the store was completely empty. Whenever I'd go to the area where I thought it was coming from, I'd hear it from somewhere else. I hope somebody was messing with me, but I'm not sure. I used to work at a 24-hour subway. I know, great start to a paranormal experience story. Well one day, I was doing the dishes, and my coworker was cleaning the toaster oven and bread oven. Out of nowhere, around 3.30 a.m., I heard our door chime go off. Out of habit I say, welcome to Subway, as I turn the corner. Nobody there. Coworker gone. I thought, okay, maybe he hopped the counter and went for a cigarette outside, as he did from time to time. Heading back to the sink to finish the dishes, I hear the door chime again. Nobody. Check the bathrooms. Nobody. What the heck? I ignore the dishes and stand at the front counter, eyeing the doors. Couple minutes later, my coworker comes through the back door where we get our deliveries, where'd you go? I asked him, turning towards the back door area. To take out the trash, he replies. Door chime. He does the same thing as me, welcome to Subway, turns corner to see nobody there, but this time, the door was wide open. Our doors are weighted to where they'll close on their own if you let go of them. Door stayed open for a couple minutes as we stared. Then suddenly slammed. Not a windy night, and our doors wouldn't even stay open like that on the windiest of days. Have no idea what caused this or why it happened on that particular night, but after I got a different job, I was told it never happened again. Told my boss about the incident and we all looked at the cameras. Nobody could explain it. I used to intern in a recording studio in NYC years ago, where it was technically open 24-7, meaning there was always someone there whether clients were in or not. Anyway, it was on an upper floor of a building, and due to the amount of expensive equipment inside, you could not access that floor by elevator without someone letting you up. The button for that floor was locked out so you couldn't press it from inside the elevator. There was a camera at the front entrance downstairs, another at the elevator entrance, and one inside the elevator, all of which could be viewed from the front desk of the studio, so when people arrived, you would buzz them in, wait until you saw them enter the elevator, and then you would have to push the button for the studio floor to bring the elevator up. Well anyway, one of the nights I was working the overnight shift and it was just me and another dude, doing cleaning, maintenance etc., when we hear the elevator start running at probably like 3.30 in the morning. The whole building is all offices so really, there is nobody in the building past 5 to 6 p.m. besides us, so we thought it was a bit strange. The other guy looks at the cameras and there's nothing at all. No one in the elevator either. So although it's weird, we just figure someone must still be in the building and called it from a different floor. It made sense until all of a sudden, we see it stop at our floor and we hear the door ding. We're both in the lobby about 15 feet away from the elevator, and we give each other the hardest WTF stare ever. I can't explain how much I didn't want those doors to open. We stare like a deer in headlights completely motionless at the doors as they open. Nobody is there, no one pushed the button, nothing. We both keep staring completely still and silent, and it becomes really fleabing creepy as time goes on, and the doors don't shut, as if something is standing in doorway blocking the sensor. The doors usually close after 5 seconds or so, but we stared at it for a good 20 to 30 seconds or so before they closed, and the elevator returned back to the lobby. We stared for a bit longer before simultaneously looking at each other and saying, what the flurbo dude. The next day, we ask a couple of the other guys about it, and one of the guys said the same thing happened to him in the middle of the night when he was by himself. He said he almost soiled himself. Maybe there's a logical explanation for it, elevator malfunction, etc., but it was really freaky, since the place was generally kind of creepy at night, and there had been some other weird things. Not me but a friend used to work as a night custodian for an elementary school, which the building itself was rather old, built in the 40s maybe. He was the third shift guy, so he took over from the second shift guy at like 9 p.m. He was basically there to mop the floors and make sure no one broke in. If he got all of his stuff done, he was pretty much free to do whatever he wanted. Often after he finished doing his work, he'd go hang out in an office because there was a small TV to watch. He said things started off innocently enough. Lights turning on in classrooms where he knew they had been off previously, cabinets and doors opening and closing on their own. He didn't pay much attention to it at first. He was sort of on the fence as to where he believed in paranormal activities, so he just shrugged it off as coincidences. 
but first, he would go and check the noises out. Sometimes he'd creep around and try to catch someone in the act in case there was a way in that he didn't know about. After a month or so, he gave up looking and just learned to ignore it. He'd ask his boss about it and just get blown off. Over the coming months, things progressively got worse. Doors no longer closed on their own, they slammed shut. He heard noises like children playing, sometimes screaming. He'd find trash cans turned upside down. He'd have things thrown at him, but he would be clearly alone with nowhere for someone to hide and throw things at him. He'd contemplated quitting, but he was making good money for being nearly fresh out of high school, and he needed the money for family stuff, so he stuck with it. He'd come in, rush through his duties for the night as quickly as he could, and then go and sit in the office where he'd turn the TV to where he could sit facing the door, and that's where he'd sit until the morning crew came in at 6 a.m. He didn't want to admit that he was scared fleebless of being in that school by himself at night, so he tried to tough it out and made a lot of excuses to try and explain what was going on. The last straw for him was the night he was sitting in the office watching TV and felt someone grab the chair from behind and flip him over backward. There was clearly no one in the room and no way for anyone to get into the room without him seeing them. He picked up the office phone and called his boss at home in the middle of the night, said he quit, and he'd come back in the morning to turn his keys in. He was definitely a believer in the paranormal after that experience. He said that it wasn't until years later that he found out from someone who'd researched the history of the school before it was torn down that there used to be a pool inside the school. A number of kids had drowned in over the early years of the school until the administration decided to finally expand the building, so they filled the pool in with concrete and expand over top of it. Worked at a movie theater running the booths upstairs. The projectors are upstairs, obviously, in a long corridor. At night, after the last showing in each theater, you shut off the lights to that theater and the small one over the projector itself. Then you cover the platters to protect them from dust. It's not so bad the first few nights, because at least the lights of nearby projectors are still on for the theaters that are still running. But as you shut each one off one by one, the corridor gets darker and darker, and that little viewing window into each individual theater is pitch black. That dull, steady whirring noise you've toned out all night is gone and is now replaced by absolute silence, and there's hardly any light left anymore. Just the lights at the end of each corridor where you sit in between each start time. It's spooky enough is what I'm saying. But one particular night, I'm throwing the covers over one of the platters, and I casually glance up into the viewing theater window across the way. And there's a face. It's a little boy's face and it's sheet white. I know what I saw. I'm sure there's an explanation for it and there's nothing supernatural about it, but there was a face there, and it scared the absolute heck out of me. It made an already unsettling environment that much more terrifying the rest of the time I worked there. Also for the record, inside the actual theater, these windows are a solid 8 to 10 feet above the seatbacks in the highest row. So, if someone was playing a prank, they'd need a ladder, and even then they'd have nowhere to set it. I used to work as a late-night janitor for a movie theater. I've heard talking whispering in theaters. Cleaning theaters, you would see people out of the corner of your eye sitting in the seats. My old boss worked at an old location where some of the projector rooms were at the end of an extremely long hallway, with basically no lighting at the end, so it would get progressively darker as you walked down it. He said you would feel like you were being watched the entire time, and that it would get worse the closer to the end you got. Like if someone was standing at the end of the hallway staring at you as you walked towards them. The theater I worked at was split into two halves with one dark hallway on each side, and a bright hallway in the middle. There was a hallway that cut across and connected all three of these. Many of the staff reported being alone and seeing a person cross the threshold of the dark hallway on the opposite side. Lights would turn off and on on their own. Each of the theaters has its own small emergency exit hallway. If anyone opens the door, it sets off the alarm. I've seen people walk around a corner into one of these and followed them to tell them they need to leave, only to find an empty hallway. We've also had the alarms go off on their own multiple times. The worst are the real people though. Imagine having your back to a massive pitch black glass window vacuuming at 4 to 5 a.m., only to hear a loud pounding against the glass behind you. You turn around to see a face staring at you right behind the glass. It turns out to be someone who forgot their phone or something and decided they needed to get it in the middle of the night instead of waiting until morning. Sometimes we would leave life-sized cardboard standees in the emergency exit hallways to joke with the other cleaners. Imagine turning a blind corner to find Mr. Bean staring right in front of you. 
I think you guys will appreciate this one. I was a manager at a theater and would also do the basic projection work sometimes, thread projectors and the occasional build-up tear-down of films. Our setup had a row of four theaters, so we also had a long, dark booth. It was really just a tiny corridor with the projectors sitting in it, that dead ended with the projector for Theater 4, what a fire hazard. One day I was alone in there in the dark, threading up Projector 3. This thing had a history and everyone knew about it, it would turn on and off by itself. Once it came on and someone unplugged it, but it kept running. Anyway, it was harmless enough, so we just laughed it off. So there I was, threading it up before the first shows of the day when I was overcome with this intense feeling of dread. I felt the temperature drop to frigid just like people describe, my body hairs stood on end, the whole nine yards. I wasn't on anything, and I've never felt something else like that before or since. I had a fight or flight moment and ran out of there without looking back. I went into my office and just sat there for a bit. Our projectionist, who had just finished his real projectionist stuff he was working on, came in with someone he was training. I told him to take the trainee and finish up the last two projectors, since it would be good practice for her, so off they went. No need to let them know anything else. Both of them came back into the office pale and looking shocked. They described the same thing I'd felt in the same spot I'd felt it, and they did the same thing and ran. We eventually had to get a fourth person in there, and they had zero issues. I made it a habit to find an excuse to take someone with me whenever I went there after that, but it never happened again.